G'day folks, or oh, for this afternoon's equipment autopsy, uh, since I couldn't get the entire cabinet in here, uh, it's actually still outside on the trailer, I figured we'd look at the control station for the automated filling station, weigh and fill station that I picked up from the scrapyard today. Um, this is probably the lightest part that, that is actually movable, the rest of the machine weighs about 800 pounds, or 400 something kilos. So, yeah, it's fairly substantial. But this is the control station, I was lucky to even find it. It was about 50 metres away from the control cabinet, buried under bits of a dead Commodore. The car, that is, for the Aussie, or non Aussie viewers. A Commodore is actually a car over here, as well as a PC system from the late 80s. Maybe in the early 80s. I used to have one, I'd never really had any games for it though. I had about two or three cool platforming games, and that was about it. But yes. There were, it was mixed in with bits of dead car and luckily I saw these characters on the side of it and I realised it would have been from the pack and fill machine that I found. So, uh, there isn't really any manufacturer info on it apart from, I believe it's made by Yamato. A lot of the ICs inside it are stamped Yamato and it's probably very similar to the Yamato um, dataway system that was next to it in the scrap pile. Uh, that was the very big old cabinet in the previous video, uh, roughly 1985 vintage. This one here is not... Okay, word of advice. Make sure your camera memory card has, met, has space on it before you start filming. Uh, where was I at? Yeah, not 100% sure, but it seems to be a Yamato item. Looks like Japanese. Maybe one of my Japanese viewers would be able to decipher that. I'm guessing they're product types and related programs to enter into the console depending on what product is being weighed in. Yeah, that's a co upright column. Uh, I had this upside down before. That's actually the top and you'd have a column going out and to the back of the machine so you can swing this around a bit. But as you can see she's a bit beat up. They look like product codes and names. Yeah. Looks like an LPT port, some kind of keyboard or other interface port. Big parallel port or even an old SCSI port. Um, 240 volts in and I think there's also something, for a driver that goes to the display. Oh no, it goes to the um, keypad for the on-off switch. If we open it up, there's an old school touch screen, touch screen LCD. I can feel broken glass under the touch screen, so that's dead. Um, yeah, voltage. This has all been smashed. It was laying in two pieces. I just pieced it back together. Capacitor's been ripped off. All of those components have been ripped off, so that board's useless. Yeah, we've got switches. Yeah, one of those Molex connectors is interface power on off for the main unit and that one there I think is 240 volts input so in theory if I tidy this up enough I'll be able to get it to power up that'll be a backlight inverter another backlight inverter 250 volt 4.7 microfarad caps um, 105 degree 47 light 50 volt axial 63 63 volt, 100 microfarad axial, fairly heavy duty stuff. And that's control there, that's a rotary selector, probably for menu selection. Sl rotate it to select which menu you want, and then you go, from the, go through the touch screen from there. And whatever's in that back panel, we'll find out later. I'm half tempted to put power to it and just see what happens. Hook all these connectors back up to the LCD and just see what it does. That'd be kind of interesting. That's cover gasket, let it go around there. It's designed to be airtight, there's even a silica gel pack taped in there. Not that there's much use since it's had water sitting in the bottom of it. Yeah, desiccant pack. That's where I got that little Peltier dehumidifier from. It was inside the stainless steel cabinet. Kind of handy. Once it's running, it'd keep any moisture out of the electronics. Well, you know, I've got to put power to it. <laughs> we can't not put power to it, but I figured I'd open the back up and see what's going on inside before I do so. Bits floating around everywhere, but it all seems to be in order. P 
power supply is nicely built. It's Japanese, made by Cosell. Um, 5 volts, 5 amps, 15 volts, 1.2 amps, and 15 volts, 0.5 amps, and various outputs, 75 watts. AC, oh, it's only 85 to 132 volts. Yeah, I might blow this up if I do that. <laughs> The noise filter is rated to 250 volts, but I don't think this power supply will like it if I put 240 volts into it, so I might have to put this on the Variac. <laughs> we'll just bring it up gradually until I get some activity and we should be right. I mean, it takes 85 to 135 volts, so that's alright. We'll just run this off the Variac. Uh, yeah, I had a feeling it was going to be like that. It's a good thing I opened the cabinet up, otherwise I was just going to plug it straight into the wall. Which is always a possibility too, because I can't see myself using this power supply for anything at that kind of voltage. So, depending on what this does, we might crank it up till it pops. <laughs> Gotta have a bit of fun. I'll put it on timbers first, just in case something goes short to ground. I am uploading videos at the moment, and I haven't got my UPS set up quite yet. So... Yeah, we'll play it safe. Okay, let's take this thing up to uh, 120 volts and see what it can do. It's about 120 there. No control voltage, nothing seems to be working. Yeah. I think I need the keypad to work, but unfortunately it's all smashed up, so... I don't know if I'll get this thing to work at all. Hmm. Not even display. I don't get. Don't even get the display to come up. Let's play around with this a little bit more. Okay. Reconnected a few things on that front board, but I don't think it'll make much difference. Either way, it's last try before I isolate it and blow that power supply to hell. There's half a dozen of them in the base cabinet that I've got, and yeah, I don't need one that small, so we'll blow it to bits and see what happens. Either way, we'll go hot straight to 120, Variac still set. Nothing. Screwdriver. Start, you bastard. Nothing. It's not happy with me. Oh well. Let's uh, take it off ground and uh, yeah, see if we can pop it. <laughs> okay, well, let's finish the old power supply off. I've disconnected the display panel just in case it's okay, but I have a feeling the whole lot's wrecked. The main board's damaged and everything like that, so we'll sort of finish it off. And yes, it is made by Yamato. I found a few uh, stickers and things on it. It even has optic fibre. That's pretty impressive for something this old. It is not complaining. Fuse. Well, that was no fun. I guess we've got to bypass the fuse. Okay, we'll mess with this power supply a bit later. I've got more important things to mess with. Yeah, the filter cap's getting hot, but just as it started to get hot, the, fil the fuse went, so we'll play with that one later. If the other ones in the control cabinet are also 110 or 120 volt, we can pop them too because it's pretty much useless. Yeah, Yamato scale. That's what that's for. This might not be for the big cabinet, but I've got a feeling it is because it has optic fibre on it. It could be for the um, Yamato data way, but that has its own control panels and things, so I've got a real good feeling this is for the control cabinet that I got. I hope it is. That's a big ass processor chip. 
Motorola. Hmm. Serious stuff. That's about all that's in that one. Let's strip down this front panel next. Okay, well, forget trying to blow the power supply up. I found something really interesting. That almost looks like an early plasma display panel. It's a glass, two layer glass panel with rows of pixels. That's not liquid crystal. Not as far as I know anyway. It might be. I'm pretty sure I can see what looked like plasma display uh, CFL arrays. It's made by planar. And I believe planar actually made plasma display panels early on. Voltage 178.6. Yeah, I think this is actually a high voltage driven early, early plasma display panel. I remember seeing something on Wikipedia about these being in old PC systems and things. That's really interesting. You don't see that kind of stuff anymore. And this, I think the crunching I could hear was just dirt caught between the glass and this and it hasn't really hurt anything but that might be a capacitive touch screen. There's a border around it but I don't know if it's even connected. I'll try and pull that out, but I've got a feeling that's a capacitive touch screen assembly as well. There's no other way of controlling this apart from that selector switch. So this must be a capacitive type display um, touch panel with these connectors on it. Yeah, that's really interesting. I was expecting an old LCD panel. I was not expecting something like this, which I'm pretty sure judging by the inverters and the high voltage capacitors there. These aren't your standard 16 volt bloody LCD monitor caps. These are 250 volt. So I'm pretty sure that is a genuine miniature plasma display panel. It even looks like if I look close at it, yeah. I'm going to keep you over there. I'm not going to break you. <laughs> I'm going to carefully dismantle the rest of this and see what the rest of this display touch panel is. But yeah, there's more to this than meets the eye. At first I thought it would just be a standard LCD readout like your um, conventional modern machine displays, but this is fairly old. This might not be for the display cabinet that I found because that was made in 1999. This one was made a lot earlier, so it's probably off the dataway system. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I just found all the info I'd ever need. Planar still have an owner's manual online. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, 512 by 256 pixel electroluminescent display. Technically not a plasma, but very close. And very neat. I like that. I'm going to keep you for later. A lot more interesting than normal little LCDs like you find on photocopiers. They usually have nice big touch panel LCDs, but I've never really worked out how to, how to make them work, more or less something to use them for. They're usually very low resolution. Uh, dot pitch is very low, but this document has all the info that I need on it. Got component layouts, it's setup hold timing, optional filters, display area characteristics, all that sort of stuff. What goes where, panel dimensions. Yeah, 5.85 inches wide by 9.28 long. Pretty small. But either way, it's all interesting. And Planar also have manuals on all the other different models. And VGA displays all the way up to very early stuff. Oh, that's really neat. I just realised why there's no traces on this front panel. It's one solid piece. Uh, this has a light grid system. It was a series of presumably infrared, or not infrared, but light beam collectors and emitters around the outside. And wherever you move your finger inside that grid, it will coordinate its exact position. So if you've got icons, evidently they'd be very large icons on the screen, it will pinpoint where your finger is. And I'm guessing you move your finger and push the control button on the panel for it to recognize it. There doesn't seem to be anything 
on this dis on this plastic panel that you could touch and tell it to go there. You'd obviously have to have a control in one hand and move your finger around through the light grid on the other one. Although, funny thing is it says Carol Touch. So, maybe there is some kind of pickup on it, but it doesn't look like it. That or you don't move your finger through the light grid and you just go like that. That'd be that'd make more sense. Just the momentary in, incursion of your finger in that area of pixels or data or whatever it uses must be what tells it where you are and what you're doing. Because yeah, these are all IC driven. Very interesting. It's old school technology. This is really neat stuff. Same with this board. That main processor I see and everything is pretty serious stuff. I'll try and get a close-up of some of that before we call it quits on this one. I'm going to keep some of this stuff, I'm sure somebody will like it. That bit's trash, that's that's going in the bin. That push button there is salvageable, that one's been ripped off at the front. Um, power supply is half popped, but we'll finish that one off later. And the main digital board, well, who knows. This thing's been out in the weather for a while, so it's pretty much useless to anyone, and it can stay that way. I'll just throw it in the bin as it is. I don't know, might pull it out if someone wants it. But, yeah. I don't know, I don't really want to sell that little touch panel thing, or the um, display panel, that's kind of neat. I might keep it all as a wall ornament. But yeah, that's just a plastic insert that's stuck in with double-sided tape. There's nothing else to it. processor I see. Looks like a few are missing or just never installed. backup battery up there. Optic fiber inputs. That's kind of neat for something that old to have optic fiber on it. it. Must have been really expensive in its day. DC to DC converter there, 5 to 12 volts. So small it's pretty much useless. And those big leads there come off the field power supply. Yeah, 5 and 15 volt inputs. Fairly decent caps in that. It's a fairly decent power supply. It's just a shame that the line voltage is only 120 volts. Otherwise it would be useful. I mean these heatsink blocks go through to the other side. They're screwed to the heatsink on the back. Pretty tough stuff. But yeah. It's pretty much rubbish now. As is the rest of the unit. The rest of the unit's gone. That went and one of the big bins yesterday, I think it was, just loaded it up with a heap of other stuff and car body and that was it, and threw it out. Scrap metal. Oh well, that's the end of that one, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. It's a fairly lengthy video for what I was expecting to be fairly quick. <laughs> uh, it's funny how that works.